Hi, everyone. I'm Frank Malikot. I'm based here at KTVU Fox 2 in the San Francisco Bay Area. My guest is Michael Soller. He is the uh, Deputy Insurance Commissioner of Northern California. Uh, Michael, good to have you with us. Frank, thanks for having me on. Uh, well, we're talking about fires. There are currently 10 major fires uh, right here in Northern California right now. The Dixie, the Monument, and the Caldor Fire outside of Lake Tahoe are the biggies. They've burned over a million acres. And insurance premiums are already through the roof after over 4 million acres burned last year. And I've talked to some homeowners up in the Myers area outside of South Lake Tahoe, and they're concerned. They're concerned about the fire and their homes, but after the fire is out, they are concerned of whether or not they can afford the insurance on their home. What can you say to these people to comfort them? Well, I think this is absolutely a, an issue we're seeing not just in Myers, not just in the areas around these fires, we're seeing it across the state. Um, and, and it's driven by these massive wildfires that we've had in the past couple of years. It's, this is really a problem years in the making and it and it goes back, you know, even, even to, to 2015 when we started seeing some of these big fires. And then of course, 2017 and 18, when these, these, these huge, you know, the, the biggest losses of, of life and property in, in the state's history. So I, the first thing is to recognize this is a problem and it's a problem particularly for people who are living in these areas that, that, that there is this wildfire risk. And, and the thing I'd say, first of all, is that this is not a problem you cause. This is not a problem people cause, but it, a lot of people now are, are caught up in it. And you know, Insurance Commissioner Ricardo Lara you know, took office in 2019. One of the first things he did was went around the state and went to 36 different counties. And so heard directly from people about these problems, including in El Dorado County, where we had hundreds of people come out to a meeting there. And you know, so we're taking some actions, but the first thing to, to, to say is that Competition is critical here. Keeping competition and restoring competition to areas. Because if you live in parts of the, the Bay Area, probably right where you are uh, there in, in, in downtown Oakland, um, you have com insurance com companies competing for your business. You have your choice and nobody likes to shop for insurance, but if you have to and, and your, your rates go up, you have another company who's probably gonna compete for them on price. But in other areas of the state, you can't even get an insurance company to return your call. And, and that's a problem because we're seeing more and more people being forced to go to what's known as the FAIR plan, which is California's insurer of last resort. That's more expensive coverage and it's more limited. And so it's, it's uh, I think first thing is, is, you know, it's an undeniable problem and, and, and it's something that, that we've got to work together on. Uh, a little insurance 101A, a homeowner's policy, does that cover fire or are we at a point now in California where you not only need homeowners, but a, in addition to a fire policy? It's a great question, right? There is no such thing as a wildfire policy. That's the first thing. There's, there's, there's a, uh, you know, we typically talk about a homeowner's policy, a comprehensive homeowner's policy sometimes, um, or a fire only policy might be another option. And, and I'll give you an example, a, you know, a comprehensive policy will cover you for not only fire, and that includes wildfire, but it, it'll also cover you for things like liability or theft. If you, liability if somebody gets hurt on your property or theft or water damage. Uh, a fire only policy, on the other hand, uh, will only cover you for fire. So it doesn't cover those other, those other uh, perils, we call them. But, and, and the reason why this is important is because many people uh, in California, in, in areas like Tahoe, are, are having to go to the California Fair Plan. That is a policy it's backed by its premiums and the insurance companies, not by taxpayers, but it's there if you can't get insurance anywhere else. But it is limited coverage. It only covers fire and a couple of other things. It doesn't cover liability. And so homeowners, uh, one of the things that the commissioner heard is homeowners are incredibly frustrated. They are non-renewed by their insurance company. They have to go to the fair plan, but they have to buy another policy to make up for that coverage that they lost for liability, for theft. For water damage and that comes at an additional cost and so uh, taken the commissioner's taking a couple of actions to address that as well tell us well tell us what california is doing not only to make uh, these policies you know competitive but cheaper but also give uh, some of the homeowners out there that have suffered great loss or are in those fire zone areas that just say enough already we it's almost more than my mortgage payment 
No, that's exactly right. And in fact, that's a story we've heard of real estate deals falling through because it turned out the, the insurance quote was higher than they expected. And, and that hurts not only uh, you know, consumers, it hurts home buyers, it hurts local governments who count on you know, home sales for revenue to support emergency services. So absolutely, um, it's critical to keep insurance companies uh, writing policies for people. And so a couple of, of actions that, that the commissioner has taken here just in, in the recent years, I mentioned the FAIR plan. Uh, so the FAIR plan uh, it really needs to modernize. And so the commissioner actually two years ago almost ordered the FAIR plan to offer a, a, a more comprehensive policy to replace that policy that someone might have lost. The FAIR plan unfortunately sued us but just last month, a court upheld the commissioner's uh, order and his authority. So we're hoping that we can get that in place for people soon so that they'll have an, an option, a comprehensive option, instead of having just that basic limited coverage. So that's one, one action uh, to strengthen that. Another action is, is really just to make sure that we're, we're, we're improving the claims payments, you know, making it easier for people uh, who have had a loss and, and who, you know, so they don't have to get through all this red tape, filling out every single item in an inventory. No longer do you have to do that if you've suffered a, a total loss. I've also extended some of the timelines and extended, you know, the benefits. And, and that includes if you've been evacuated from your home. If you've been evacuated, you know, you may have coverage. And that's an important thing. Uh, you, you have, you, have uh, you know, two to four weeks minimum to just pay for things like you know, a, 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 a hotel or food. So that's, these, these are important new benefits people just need to know about um, because it, it includes even if you haven't suffered a loss. Um, and then finally, another, another big action that the commissioner has taken is, you know, we are really, really working both with insurance companies and then with our local leaders to increase the preparation you do before a fire because there's so much people can do to mitigate to prepare to, to, we call it home hardening and community hardening. We think about, you know, making your house survive a fire. And that not only helps, you know, that's gonna, that's gonna protect your house, but it's also gonna help the firefighters when they come through to try to protect your house. I just heard of uh, one of the, the incident commanders on the Caldor fire saying, you know, they come through and one of the first things they do is they, they look at houses and they say, is there, is there, can we do something here? Can we ladder up fuels? Can we pull, you know, uh, uh, wood piles away from houses, because that's going to protect houses. So if, if you've done that work in advance, that should count towards your insurance, you should be getting an incentive from your insurance company, you know, to help you reduce those costs. So all of these actions taken together, you know, we're really working to increase competition. And, and, and that's going to going to bring down some of the costs that people are facing in the long run, because it's going to save people's homes and their lives. Are we at a point now, and I, and I think we are, especially here in California, Oregon and Washington too, uh, where there's just these forests that haven't burned for hundreds of years, where we need to do all that fire protect, mitigate, get out defensible space, get the wood pile away, get flammable liquids out of the way, uh, clean under your decks, all that sort of thing. Um, it should become commonplace now, especially if you live you know, in the foothills or the Sierra or the Cascades or wherever the case may be. No, that's right. I, I think these massive fires, not just in California, but we saw the fires in Oregon uh, as well uh, over the past couple of years. It's really been a wake up call. Uh, you know, climate change is, is it, the impacts are undeniable. Um, and really the focus is, you know, we, we continue to work to reduce emissions, but the focus also has to be, how do we reduce the harm? How do we prepare better? And that's something where, you know, the, the, we have local communities doing that. We have individuals spending thousands of dollars out of their pocket to, to trim trees, to heart, to put up, you know, uh, uh, you know put ember resistant grates on their eaves. You know, there's, there's a lot of things that people can do, but we need the insurance companies to be part of this solution. We need them not just to be walking away from their longtime consumers as they have been, but actually to help incentivize and invest in these communities. And we've seen, uh, we have a number of companies now uh, who offer premium discounts uh, to people who, who do some of these actions. We wanna see that number grow. It's gotta go, it, it's gotta continue to, to go up because that sends the message to homeowners, there's something we can do. 
there is something that, and we can get money back in our pocket for that. So that's, that's a key priority. Um, so I hope, I hope when we're talking, we're going to be able to continue to report on progress there um, because there is a way forward, but it's going to take, you know, efforts by government, by individuals, and by the insurance industry. Well, the car insurance companies have been doing it for years, right? If you're a good driver, your premium goes down if you're not calling them every other week, right? That's exactly right. We have a, we've, we have a good driver discount. Um, why couldn't we have a good driver discount for homes? That, that really helps people. I mean, that is, that is the, the reality of this. It's, it's going to help our homeowners. It's going to help our communities. It's going to help our first responders. And so I think you're, we're starting to see some, some, some eyes opening in the insurance industry that, that to be part of that solution as well. And Michael, you touched on it a bit, but uh, you wanted to uh, bring in what can we do or what is what are you folks doing, I guess, is a better way to put it uh, for fire survivors, people in paradise out of the campfire and uh, some of the awful fires that uh, have been in California in the last five years. Absolutely. Well, I mentioned a, a couple of things in terms of, you know, there, the, the, there have been some changes in the law and Commissioner Lara has sponsored and worked with the legislature to make some changes to really address some of the problems we saw after the campfire, where, and after the Tubbs fire and after the Southern California fires, where, where people really had a hard time with their insurance company. So we've made a number of changes there um, to benefit people. I, I think rather than going through all of them, because it can get very confusing, the important thing is that the, the Department of Insurance, you know, I'm talking to you from home, but the Department of Insurance, uh, whenever there's a local assistance center opening in a community, we have staff there. And they can, you can actually go in and meet with us in person um, and we can help you walk through that claim, find out what benefits you're entitled to. Um, you know, and if there's a problem with your insurance company, we can help you open that, that case. And, and by doing that, we have gotten hundreds of millions of dollars in extra benefits back to people that they wouldn't have gotten otherwise from recent fires. And so that's the first thing to know. Um, you're not alone. Department of Insurance is here. And if you can't come and meet with us in person, call us. We have an 800 number, 800-927-4357, uh, staffed Monday to Friday. Um, you can even chat with us on our website. So, so same, same, same way you would with a phone company. You know? So it's, it's, the idea is, is to, to try to make, meet people where they are and, and really help them out. Uh, when they're going through this. And so again, just urge people to, to, to you know, look at their benefits and then to contact us if they have questions. And this, is, this goes for people if they've had a loss to their home or if they've been evacuated because they may have these uh, living expenses benefits in their policy and they may not know about that. All right, well, you answered my, uh, my last question was how to get in touch and you certainly did that. Uh, Michael Soller, he's the Deputy Insurance Commissioner for uh, Northern California. Michael, thank you for taking some time. I know you're busy and let's just hope these, uh, these fires can get put out in a, in a big hurry. Absolutely. Well, that's, that's the key. We're, we're, we're rooting for our first responders out there getting these fires under control and then we'll be there to help people rebuild and recover in the aftermath. All right, Michael. Thanks again. I'm Frank Malicote here at KTVU. Have a great day, everybody.